like you to have the thoughts about what you just ate, the last meal you had. Maybe you had it in the last 24 hours. Did you have something with milk in it? Did you have a salad? Did you have peanuts? Did you have a plant-based alternative to meat? Did you have meat? Whatever you had is as a result of an agricultural industry somewhere in the world. Agriculture in Africa is the one core industry that doesn't just provide us with food and sustenance, it's a source of employment, it's a source of income in a, in a continent and in our country, South Africa, where people are unemployed, where people are lacking multiple sources of income. Agriculture is a core industry for us. Okay, so agriculture is a core industry for Africa. Agricultural engineering, agriculture engineers are engineers who are able to connect the agricultural space, so production of agriculture, production of food, with technology and innovation that is in the in engineering spaces. So we are the unique builders of infrastructure, unique equippers of equipment, and all kinds of things that you can consider make the agricultural in industry possible. We design irrigation schemes, we design pipelines that bring water to rural areas. We design dams on farms. That's what agriculture engineers are. And at our last um, symposium for the South African Institute of Agriculture Engineers, we realized that only 10% of our members were women. Our demographic at the moment has most of our professional engineers are white men, most of the middle age. And the next group that's represented is black men. And then the third group, you'd be surprised, is black women. And white women are the least represented group in the South African Institute of Agriculture and Engineers. But why is diversity so important? Why, do, why should we care? Why should it matter that only 10% of the members are, are, are women? Why should it matter? Globally, it's been accepted that diversity fosters the ability to be creative and innovative. When workplaces have more diversity in them, they're able to come up with creative solutions and perspectives of, of problems that other people would not be able to see. So the more diverse your group, the more variety of solutions you can come up with as a group. So, I'm an agricultural engineer. I've been working for seven years in the agricultural engineering um, industry. I first worked as a research engineer for a professor and a middle-aged, let me not say white, a middle-aged white professional. And he taught me all I knew about research. And then after that, I moved on to a consulting engineering firm. And in the very same place, I was also taught by a middle-aged Afrikaans man. So what am I trying to challenge us to think about? That yes, the old perspective of agriculture, the old perspective of agriculture engineering is a certain look and a certain color. But the world has been saying it every day, the future is female, right? The future is female. I am the future, you're the future. Um, so now, when we're looking at the different de demographics of the South African Institute of Agriculture Engineers, we realize that most of our professionals are middle-aged, older white men. They have all the knowledge, they have all the understanding, but they're going to retire soon. And there's no transfer of knowledge to the next generation of engineers because the next generation of agriculture engineers is mostly black men. So they're not having interactions. We're having a situation where our knowledge is gonna leave the industry. Our knowledge is gonna leave the country. And how are we gonna transfer that? So that's where diversity and being aware of the importance of being able to deal with diversity comes in. So why am I here today? I'm here to challenge everyone who is a leader in a technical space, that you have the ability to be more inclusive in the way that you interact with people who are younger than you. You have the power to build the future, in my case, the future of agriculture and engineering. And to the young people and the underrepresented groups, if you want to be a leader in a technical space, you have to understand you have to be indomitable, you have to be unbreakable, you have to be tenacious, you have to build up support systems around you so that you're able to be a future leader. Future leaders can't be indomitable unless they build themselves up. Not your success is going to be brought on a platter, you have to work hard for it. 
So if you want to be a future leader, you must be aware of the journey you're going to go through. So I'd like you to just imagine my first few days of work. I arrived at work straight after graduation and working a bit in the research institution and now deciding to work in industry as an actual consulting engineer. I was finally getting an opportunity to design stuff that's going to transform the agricultural engineering industry, right? And I opened documents that I was supposed to learn how to design them from. And I listened to interactions and meetings. And guess what I found? The language of all the work I was trying to learn in was not English. I was faced with a situation where I was trying to enter into an industry, but everything in my industry, most things in my industry, were not in English. I now had to either learn a new language or engage people to try and meet me where I was. So why am I bringing everybody to this thought process? I'm trying to make everyone aware of the hurdles that different people face when they enter into technical spaces. And leaders who are currently in technical spaces need to be aware that your background that you had when you first entered the industry is not the same as the current people who are young at the moment. The people who are young at the moment will come from the digital age. The people who are young agricultural engineers in my, person, in my situation are young black people trying to learn how to translate their English into their home language, into a technical content, and then retranslate the technical content back into English and communicate it back to you. So the way that you analyze and assess a person's competence and ability won't be the same as how you were assessed on competence and ability. But I'd like to challenge us to meet each other halfway. The young people need to go out. If you want to be a young leader and shaker in a technical space, you need to make yourself indispensable. When I first started working, I had two Afrikaans men really help me walk the path. But one thing that made that even possible was that I chose to equip myself. So you as a leader, if you want to become a new leader in an industry, you need to find what is one core piece of information in my industry that if I learn this, I would become indispensable. So when you begin to teach yourself that one thing that would make you indispensable in your one technical space, the inertia of already being in the journey draws other people to want to join your journey as well and teach you more. You are in charge of your future. Every young person that is here, no matter your background, you are in charge of your future. You can be indomitable. You can transform the future. But you need to be willing to put in the work. You need to be willing to transform how you think. You need to be willing to put in the extra effort and draw people into your journey. To wrap up, I'd just like to challenge everyone who is here. Think about the technical spaces that you, that you are a leader in. How can you become more inclusive and more aware of the backgrounds of diversity that everybody who's in their space comes from? and everyone who is young and trying to enter into a technical space. I'd like to challenge you, when you leave this place, go learn something that makes you indispensable in your space. And then you will become the indomitable future of your industry. Because I intend to be the indomitable future of agriculture engineering. Thank you.